play. <laughs> Just flirting with, with 50 in these high 50s. All I'm doing is fishing a little swivel head jig. This happens to be a VMC rub, rugby jig, and I have a swim bait on here. Not the typical crop profile, but we'll talk a little bit more about this if we can catch a few fish, but it's a deadly combination. It's real important if you get bit like that and catch a fish like I just did, to mark that location on the structure that you happen to be fishing. And then with the Minkota All Tracks, I can hit spot lock and maintain the exact same boat positioning and try to get right back out there on that exact same lineup. Because I treat this bait like a crankbait. I'm fishing it horizontally, I'm fishing it fast through a particular area, and if the fish are set up at a particular depth along a drop off, you can be super efficient with it. There we go. Got him. That was really nice. I was feeling a rough patch, and that's the whole deal with this style of jig, is you're feeling the bottom, and that's that can be critical. That fish just threw a minnow right there. Look at that nice brown bass. Really bulldogging. Oh, there we go. Look at that nice hook job, that big single hook. That's a nice little chunk, huh? So all we're doing here today, guys, is throwing a swing head jig. Like I said earlier, this is a VNC rugby jig and it's a swing head design and a swim bait works really awesome on these. Obviously guys are accustomed to throwing crayfish profiled baits, but why not a swim bait? If you look at the underwater footage, that thing comes through the cover beautifully. That head causes that minnow to deflect, but yet it still looks really natural as it's scurrying through the rocks and gravel. And the beauty of this system is you can also get it through the weeds. So what we're doing today is uh, I got a four inch spark shad, mega bass spark shad. It rigs perfect on here. I'll show you how I'm doing it. Four inch. All I'm doing is coming in about a quarter of an inch. And the nice thing about this hook is it has a little bit longer shank and that positions the hook on the body of this four inch just perfect, pretty much center mass. So there we go. And I just kind of line it up like that to determine where I want to Put that hook through and it's at the start of that fin blow so i'm just going to insert my hook point there push it all the way through and voila so we could be fishing a crankbait out here but this gives me a little bit more weed resistance you can see how nicely that hook settles onto the back of that minnow and that last fish i caught I started feeling a rough patch and that's really the power of this swivel head design is you want to be in contact with the bottom and feel that bottom and as soon as I got into some rock and gravel, boom. So I hit spot lock there, I'm just going to make that same cast and see if we can get on another one. But that's the system. The other benefit of a swing head is you have that movement right there and that reduces torque or leverage that a fish has. Look at the loon right there, <laughs> compared to a regular jig where you know, they, they throw their head a little bit, they might be able to put more torque against that hook and cause it to come free. So this is a really good hooking bait and it's a really good holding bait once you get a fish pinned. Today I'm fishing this combo on a, just a medium heavy rod. This is a loose custom speed stick. And I like 15 pound floral for this technique. It seems like it's the right combination of strength, but yet the line diameter isn't too big where it pulls up the bait with you know increased resistance, like 20 would be a little too heavy for me fishing, you know, in this 15 to 20 foot zone. And I like to fish it on a fast reel. This is a loose speed spool, seven, five to one. Let's me pick up line pretty quickly. And the unique thing when you get bites with this bait, kind of like a crank bait, is you can get those weird changes of pressure around the bait. If I'm reeling this bait pretty quickly, and you can envision a fish coming up behind it and eating it while still moving forward, it's kind of an absence of weight for a second. But unlike a crankbait, because this bait is soft, they'll actually mouth this a little bit. But I want to be able to pick up line really quick and kind of reel set on them first just to check that bait. When that rod starts to go tight, then I'll, then I'll reel really fast and then set the hook and drive that hook home. Now the top of this thing has uh, weeds on top, grass, and then you hit about 17 to 19 feet on the edges and it goes to clean sand. 
and we've ran a lot of underwater cameras and fished this stuff a lot and it just seems like that outer weed line that 17 feet is usually a really good starting point but with this presentation today we're casting up on the edges like this and probably eight feet we'll work our way down to 10 12 14 16 and that's the beauty of this heavy hook and this heavy jig is that we can really comb the water quickly and find out what depth the fish are at. And what we'll do when we find the depth that the fish are at is we'll go into our mapping. We'll go over to the hummingbird chart tab. So again, I'm gonna hit menu, menu. I'm gonna hit menu twice. I'm gonna go over to the hummingbird chart tab. And I'm gonna scroll up from the bottom and I have depth highlight here. What I'm gonna do is move that down to the depth that I wanna paint in green. So 20 feet. My highlight range is plus or minus two feet, so I have 18 to 22 feet selected right now. Based on where we're getting bit today, casting anywhere in the green is a potential place to catch a bass. And we'll just adjust that throughout the day. If all of a sudden we're getting bit up shallow, I'm gonna go back in there and adjust this accordingly. So let's say 10 to 14 feet, I'll turn that over to 12. So now I'm highlighting 12 plus or minus two feet so 10 to 14 feet is now painted in green. That's just a really great way to quickly pattern fish on any on a particular day on any given fishery. I mean, light, light gloves would almost not feel bad. There we go. Nice one. Yeah, there we go, Bubba. Look at that loon. That's not the smallmouth, guys. That's, <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on right here. <laughs> Dude, this, is, this guy's a little too big to eat. <laughs> Sweet. This is this is a really, really, really pretty smallmouth here. When you can take a look, there's the there's the hooking effectiveness of this bait right to the cheek. Nice cheek hook job. He wasn't going anywhere. Ooh. Look at that big old bronze back. Kind of got it damaged back there. Beautiful. If you haven't put a swim bait on a swing head jig, seriously, give that a try. It's weed proof, it hooks good, tremendous amount of action. Fish just love it. Just a nice little change of pace from the, the standard crayfish profile. Catches bass like this. <laughs> 